Afternoon guys, it's Alex again and today we're going to be going through a gold trade I took last week that was an inside day and then a breakout from the inside day and it's just a, a different technique I've used to try and get access with a, a better, better risk reward on some of them and it can you know allow you to add into the lows maybe and be more aggressive into the lows because you're not skewing your price and your average isn't at the bottom. So first we're going to go through the structure a little bit then we'll look at the price action because I've started pulling back up the time and sales and there's some key bits in the time and sales that can, like, can keep you in the trade or just give you that little bit extra conviction and then some key takeaways that I learned from this trade. So if we start with the profile, we had this inside day here and both sides of the structure really are pretty poor. And we can see how on this, the low side, we've got this really pronounced a TPO point of control and a VPOC and like a little volume bulge that I like to look at because you've got to think there's got to be a lot of positioning built in here and it's somewhere if we've come a long way into it that we might see the market try and hold up or if we break through we might get a nice like release through as all the positioning unwinds. Just on top of that we had just below we've got another VPOC near the low of that day and it's a you know, really balanced profile with a like pronounced value area and VPOC. So when you're coming into the day, you've obviously got just this bit of structure here. And you can see how we've, we basically opened at the prior day's VPOC on an inside day and just kind of grinded down. We've had a test up, we failed and we've grinded down. We kind of made this little bit of like a ledgy low and a little bit of a poor low where you think there's got to be some positioning to unwind as we go back through. And maybe that could unlock then the downside and the inside day break and the break through this kind of poor low and into this VPOC. So there's one thing about when I take the trade that you'll see, but we also then, as we did break on this day, we took the break down here and we pulled back, we left a really good like low volume node. And it's something I quite like to use as an area of, you know, it's like your line in the sand. You don't want to see it go back above this level. And if it doesn't and it can hold below, then you're not wrong on the trade. In a way I try and sometimes just keep myself in the trade a little bit longer. So then on the hourly, you can see how we had, we had this big sell off. And then on the overnight of the day before the trade, so to create the inside day, we made this really one hour ledgy low. It was just the price was bouncing. Someone was sitting here and absorbing everything. And then we just drifted up later that day. So when you're coming into this day now, we're opening over here and we've got the prior day's highs that we fail straight away. And we get this kind of grind down and we start to like, you know, put some time in mid day of the inside day. And it kind of gives you the idea that maybe we can open up this downside here. The purple line is that POC, VPOC from that really balanced day just below that day's low. So you've got to think somewhere down there, if you've come a long way into the level, you're going to stall a little bit and someone's going to be happy to buy something. So then, yeah, this is it on the five minutes. You can see right on this side here how we've had this, you know, really poor low attempt. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then later then we just grinded up and we've grinded up through that day and put the VPOC at the high and built a bit of structure. But it's really then comes down to me is this on the next day, the day where the trade happened is how are we trading into it? And really there's been no attempt to like initiative to push this market high from these highs and we've had a test up we've failed and then we've made a new low and it was like coming into the cash section where i realized we kind of had this like it looks like a little inverse head and shoulders on the five minutes but it's you know it's, we, it wasn't like a quick push away there was someone it took a while and it was lethargic action going into the lows there it made you think maybe all of this and these lows here and then down to here could be unwound if we just get a bit of volume come into the market. And the opportunity for that was on the cash open. So as the cash open happened, the bonds were coming off a little bit anyway. That's like a correlation I'm looking at at the minute with gold. And we had this straight breakdown low. And it was kind of, because I took this trade as well, and I was kind of in from these lows here. And it was, it was a lot more aggressive than I expected, like a liquidation through. I was expecting maybe we get a flush down into here, but it, it really kind of stuck to the lows and kept going a lot further than a lot of us expected at the time. And then once you took that trade down and, and it had bounced back up, what I'm trying to use is these 
these like small boxes, like the consolidation positioning boxes, and then how I could maybe get access for a second leg by using these like the pushes out, the squeezes out of the early shorts. And then one thing to notice is as we did make this box and we pushed out, there's a slightly in here, there's a little wick out. Um, we left this low volume node on the day back into value. So it kind of gave you a good trade where you could say, once we've come in here, we've pushed up, we've tested this area again, we've failed. I'm going to be short sure, as long as the order flow is right here. You know where you're wrong, is here straight away. You don't want to see it back into this value. And then you can kind of get a good risk reward to unlock for a break lower down here. And this is the one thing I'm working on is if I can get this access up here and I get the right order flow, you can get in maybe smaller size. So at the minute for me, maybe just a one lot in here. And then you can be, if you see the good flows in there, there's people selling into the lows, can you then add in here and be aggressive on like kind of the break lower of the day? And then by doing that, you're not going to have your average right where you're trading. You have your average a little bit higher. You've got more size on it. Maybe it's a way you can, you know, feel more comfortable adding more and more size where you're not like being pushed and squeezed right down into the low for any quick whip back straight away. And yeah, just the other thing to notice is after we did break, this was the level with the poor lows and we kind of flushed through it and then we built basically another box of structure before going lower. So this is it on the one minute. So you, can, you can't see the prior one, but this is that poor hourly low again. This is the low from the morning. I was kind of watching the area. And then the key on this one is, for me, is we've opened up on the cash. We've come off, little consolidation. We broke low. And this was this liquidation. And it was, like, it was really intense, really, for a liquidation at this time. I know it was on the open. But there was no real, like like buying and pull back it was more of a straight liquidation that price taken next take and reloaded and taken all the way down and it made you think okay maybe there's some continuation that could happen in this move so i didn't really want to jump the gun because i find for me if i'm trying to get in on this first pull back here you know you've not got much to lean off now you 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 sell in here you're not wrong till you're back up here and you, you're paying for a break here and like for me the risk reward's all wrong so if i want to take this trade 10 times you need a lot of them to work to put, like, have that kind of risk reward. So I've been kind of trying to wait for this more, a bit more structure where I can see, okay, we've come up, we've made a high hit. And granted, this could go again, but for me, I'm, if I want to see another big leg, I, don't, I want to see it build a bit, spend a bit of time and build a bit of structure so there's more positioning to be unwound or more selling to be done. And then you can see from there, we came down and we made this quite blocky low. You know, no, no one's really buying or pushing the market away, but you know, sellers just lost control down here and we've made a block and we've pulled back up. And now that get, then gives me my, the range I'm looking at. And from here, what I've noticed is whichever side of that range breaks first, and if it fails the break and comes back in, it can often sweep straight through and the, net, the other side's the side that really goes. So it's perfect when you're looking for the downside to see this move up and this, this, this push up into the level, failed, and you'll see it on the tape. Like, so there's a bit of action, someone's buying, maybe some people are getting stopped out of the shorts, and then it just dries up. There's no big size, it's quite lethargic, there's no real like, business to be done. And it's as we drift back in here, it gives you that chance to say, right, there's no business being done there, I've got a key level in the low volume node. I can try and get short here with a tight stop because if it comes back into here, you're wrong anyway, and play for this move all the way back through the range and lower. And then, yeah, so on this one, it, you had a lot of time, and I'll listen to the videos like cut up into like key points. It's a lot of time to sit in there, but it's the first time I'd really kind of said, right, I'm going to leave this position on. I know where I'm wrong. Once you've come down, my stop's going straight at the top of this range. I'm going to try and play the whole break and liquidation through because quite often not I'll take this if we've come down and gone back up a little bit and we're still in the box I'm getting out but you're not wrong on this trade and also see how the volume increased coming into this cash open there that, that on that delta bar there that was the liquidation move down and yeah it was, it was very aggressive for a, a liquidation there was no real pullback at all it was just a straight line reloaded and you can see from here actually as well in this box, this delta is not being kind of drifting back up, it's just staying flat. 
really until we get this next liquidation down and obviously the volume coming in. So we come down into the lows. So yeah, this is just something I've put up because it's, it's kind of like a visual thing for me as well is by taking this trade up here, you know, you've got a 6.38 risk reward straight away, just taking it back to the bottom of the range. And instead of selling here, that I do like to do if you get the right order flow through the lows with being really tight and aggressive, it can give you the option to you get in this trade, you've got a good risk reward, you've got a tight stop, and you can also then, I didn't do it on this occasion, but look to add on the break if you get the right order flow and you get more size on. You've basically got a 6 to 8, uh, 6.38 banked and then you can try and play for the next move. And then it shows if you're trying to hold it down for the move, you're getting to nearly a 10R on the trade. And it's just a way maybe you can, you know, have a bigger risk reward, might allow you to get more, like put a bit more size on here because you've got a tight stop. And, you know, really push these trades to try and extract a little bit more than I maybe usually do. So yeah, if we go on to the order flow, on this trade. So I've had to split this up a little bit because there is, um, there's quite a, it's quite a long trade. But if we start with where I'm getting into the trade here. So we're kind of watching this ladder here, the gold ladder. Uh, at the minute, it's something I've added back into my trading because I stopped using it, but Eric did a stream on it and it was actually, I found it quite useful having the time and sales up. For me, it's quite a good re representation, visualization of what's happening. Maybe sometimes you see this flicker and move, but to see what's actually being traded for me is quite useful. At the minute, this one's for oil because we've had the oil cash open, so I like to have it up on the cash open. But from the, uh, the chart, you can see this was the range. This is the, where the box was as high the box before. And in the corner of my eye, I now see like gold's flicked through. And as we flick through, you see like this quick little bit of energy. But it's not really pushing back through with like tons of stops going off. It's just kind of sitting there. And at this point when I notice, so we go back. It changes my attention from watching the oil open. It's just something like out of habit that I do quite a lot to then really focusing on this goal because I'm thinking maybe, although I took the liquidation down, maybe there's a second, a second move in here that we can get on. So as you can see, like, there's, there is some action. There's obviously going to be some stops above this level of people that have been trying to play shorts. But now for me, it's like, what happens here? So you can see some of these bigger orders coming through. But as we sit here a little bit longer, you know, the, like the participation dies out a bit and there's not as much like larger trades going through. It starts to look lethargic. There's no one really coming in to buy and take this market higher and back up into the range. You see, we, we've come up into this like kind of two threes area and kind of stalled. And for me now, I'm looking at right, I know from this five, that's the higher the range. And maybe there's a way, once we've offered back into the range, to get, try and leave an order here, be passive with a you know, tighter stop, and then try and play for the sweep back through. So there, you get this selling back into the range. Yeah, nearly 40 lots put back in. So then for me, it's right, let's just try and get filled at the top of this range, keep it quite tight, so you've got like nine ticks of risk. So you don't want to see it then pushing back up, because once you're above here, you're back into the, the value of the day anyway at this point. And now it's like, right, you're going to have to sit in this for a while and it's going to be a little bit choppy at first. But what you're hoping to see is this kind of push back into this volume that we've done down here in the range. And then you shouldn't really see it coming back. So there's one other key point at the start point that helped me out. And just by using this time in sales, as well as watching what's happening on the ladder, just to see kind of what's been traded and what the size that's been done. You can see here, I, I was actually trying to be really tight on this trade because you know, I was trying to look after the day I'd had. But really, there's no point hovering here. You're gonna, you've got your stop in and you know where you're wrong. You see, we start to rotate in this top area. There's still going to be people looking for like the, the breakout, the retest of this level, then to get long and play higher.
you can see like on the tape, there's, there's not as much now coming through. It's all ones, twos and threes and not as much size. So you can see that there wasn't much like participation up here. There's not much activity. And really what you want to see now is it drift back through that range and then get the order flow pick up and get aggressive down near the lows. You can see, like every time we try and push above, there's someone. Someone is sitting here, willing to sell, and or at least just absorb the buying. And there's, there's one key moment where someone really hits market. And it just doesn't move, and it stays in the range. So another thing I'm always trying to look at at the minute with this gold is like what are the bonds doing, especially because they've got the open at the same time. So you can see like the five year is near getting near its lows. And then obviously you've got the 10 year that's kind of sitting in the middle, but they look, they look quite weak at this point and heavy. So it's trying to get like added conviction for the gold move. You can see as we get back into the range, we get a few of these bigger orders, you know, people willing to like participate a bit more that we didn't see when we were up here. It's making you think maybe this like relief back up is a bit exhausted. So yeah, that was kind of how I entered the trade now. So that's how I got my entry into the trade. And then I'm going to skip just forward because it's a pretty long video to another key point where that for me is just something like by having, by having up the, um, the time and sales can really help you and you know, just give you sometimes that extra conviction for me to sit in a trade. Go from here. So like now we've sat in this trade for quite a while and we've kind of come back down, but we're now pushing back up. And I've, to be honest, you sh my stop st still should be up here, but I was trying to like, you know, look after my day a bit here and protect it. So I've gone through a scratch and really it could easily flick but and be out of the range. But for me, I'd seen kind of the action earlier on in them 15, 20 minutes I was waiting, someone bought into these 05s, about 90 market, and it just didn't move. And then you see it again here. It says someone comes in and they buy 90 and it just didn't tick up at all. It was sat there absorbed and straight offered. And then that's kind of giving me the signs that maybe you can sit in this trade now. You know, every time someone's trying to hit at market and buy, it didn't go a tick above and it's traded back down. I mean, since someone's willing to sit up here and sell, so maybe it gives you that opportunity just to you know, sit in the trade a little bit longer and just try and you know, be passive instead of being aggressive, selling in lower. And you can see as then he's hit mark and, and not gone up, we've kind of drifted off now. You just see a little bit of the pace start to pick up with some bigger orders. So someone's happy to sit here and sell down here. And you kind of get these bigger orders come through, but you, the other thing I've got in mind is we've got a key level here at 1800. So you know there's going to be a bit of action around that you're going to have to sit through. But as long as you're not pushing back up, above these 05s on the top of the range and there's no reason to really be getting out the trade. You, you're still right, there's a good risk reward and it's worth sitting in. But yeah, this bit of the video is really just to show you that, that you get these key moments if you've got the time and sales up where someone might hit a larger size at market and if it's not going to then push above that tick at all, it's going to hit it and come straight off, then yeah, it can just give you that conviction that, okay, there's someone sitting up here selling and they're going to absorb the bigger orders. They're obviously a larger participant 
and you know, you've got a chance to sit in this now. So yeah, so if we go on to the next one is where it starts to get, you know, closer to the lows because otherwise it goes on for a long time. So then at this 19 point, there's a time where we're sitting still in this range and we've not moved far at all. And I'm still trying to sit in this trade. So now you've been in this 15, 20 minutes. And yeah, you've not got a lot to show for it so far, but I'm, I'm trying to sit here and say, well, I'm not wrong still. We're still back into this range. Yeah, it's kind of gone lethargic, but we didn't have any action up here. So you need to try and sit in this trade. And then as with this mid range, we start to see a little bit of selling come in and then eventually we'll see this, this larger seller come in and hit market and it kind of just like brings some energy back. You can see we're still getting these 18s, these 13s, but you really want to see someone a bit bigger come in and you know, push this market down. We've still, we've, we've traded down to here before, we had some selling, but we've obviously been absorbed, we've got the round number. So there, we get that first big bunch of selling all the way through here. And then again, you know, someone's obviously willing to hit market at the site. So you can show right, this area is still this seller started around here, around here, and he's kind of moving down. And we're trying to, you know, break through this level. I kind of highlight prices, key areas to like to watch the order flow. But as long as we're seeing that, you know, people come in and hit market and sell a bit, we're not really pushing all the way back up here. We're just kind of like reloading, hitting again. Kind of gives you that idea that okay, we can still sit in this. Nothing's showing me that yet that I'm wrong. And that's one thing I'm bad at is when I'm in a trade and you know you're on side, but it's not doing everything you want to see. Maybe it's going to take a bit longer, but not you know talking yourself out. Then being able to sit in the trade longer and just accept I'm not wrong, and until I'm shown I'm wrong, I'm not going to be getting out. So yeah, that was just the key point there. It's just you know you start to see a bit more of this size selling into the market. And you know, it gives you that conviction to sit in the trade. So then if we skip to near the end. So if we watch from here, I'm just going to put it on one and a half speed. So it will be quicker just to get, get through it a bit. Because obviously we've got the Fed. So now we've kind of come back through the range. We're near the lows of the range. And one thing that really helped me out here is the five year is sitting on its lows. The 10 year isn't yet, but you know, it's, it's drifting off slowly. And then obviously you've got Euro behind here that's coming off. So when I have the bonds going lower and Euro going lower, and just, it doesn't have to be like a big move down, but just you no know, drifting lower. You've kind of got both correlations working together and it can kind of give you that extra conviction on gold. Sometimes I find if you've got the bonds going up, the Euro coming off, it's some, you, do, you don't know which way it's going to go. Is it going to follow the bonds or is it going to follow the currencies? So by seeing that near the lows, and if you watch this slowly, this will drift down. You start to get these bigger orders come in and gold can really get to the lows. And you start to see these 50 lots and the action's really picked up here. You get 150 there down into the lows. And this is kind of what you want to see if you're looking for a breakdown lower. And at this point, we've obviously had, the, it's 2.30, so you've got the cash open, so the spooze has started. So you've kind of got this higher volume come into the market and now you're sat at the lows of the range. And really, it's like once you get through this low, I should be trying to add now because it's not really pulling back that far and you've also got a good price. You've got a six to one on already. So now for me, it's kind of watching as we go down. Now you've got the 10 year ticking to its lows and the five year stuck to its lows still. You know, as we liquidate through here now, you want to see these bigger sellers come in and you don't want to see too much you know, absorption and push back. So as long as you're not seeing that, I'm going to sit in this trade. But for me as well, the second I start to see that absorption, if we get to a low and we're not getting any big orders come through, it's maybe a chance for me to get out, reassess and get back in. So yeah, as you can see, as we're coming down, there's no real you know, big whip back. Every time it's just getting reloaded and stuck to the lows. We broke, we've left a low volume in here. So that's an area to watch. And then I've just got key levels marked up on the way down. So this is the first time that you're trying to see someone step in. You can see the volume's building quite quick around this area and this level. 
but still, nothing's really telling you you're wrong yet. And that's it. You see you're there, you get, you get more of a liquidation to kind of move, and you, you start to feel, okay, this is getting stretched for me. We've come a long way without any pullback. Maybe it's a chance, you know. You, you, I've, at this point, I've still got the one on I didn't add. And I start to see this here. It's, you know, someone's sitting there down here absorbing. We've still got the five-year in that, but it's, it becomes a game of how far do you want to push this to, to give back so much. And for me now, it's like you've, you've took nearly 100 ticks out this move. And that, for me, was my exit. When you start to come in here, you get a bit of selling, but there's no real you know, big seller pushing this low. And someone's happy to sit here and absorb. And it makes me think, maybe there's a chance we get a pullback higher. And do I want to sit and take a 15, 20 tick pullback when you've already took 100 ticks out of the move? Obviously, the other point is you can see bonds just start to bid off the lows as well. So you're, trying to, you're losing a little bit of the correlation. But yeah, I thought I'd leave this to play for a second. You can see you know, we got, we're starting to get a bit decent blue on here. You know? Someone's stepping into buy now. We've come a long way in pretty much a straight line from the lows. Yeah, we're pushing lower, but we're not really getting that flushness. People are sitting on all these prices. We could get some more selling below this level, but no one's really you know, been able to push and flush this down again. Although you have built a lot of volume down here as well, so you, know, you, you could easily sit in it, but for me, I prefer just to you know you took what you wanted to see this flush out. I don't want to try and then do the home run trade that I used to do quite a lot. You know, hold this for two, three hundred ticks. It's going to go straight down because now I'm at this stage. Now I'm expecting some rotation. You know, we've come a long way. So then, if it's a big ask then to break through straight through another level. So yeah, I'm trying to like yeah, take the easier ticks. Then yeah, sit in it because when I found when I sit in a trade and I'm holding it and I'm not starting to see what I want to see still. So I'm not seeing it you know just off or straight down down the page and then you know reload and go again. I, I make the worst decision. So I, maybe I'll sit in this. It will do its pullback and a squeeze. I'll then, you know, get out at the high and then I'll watch it come straight off. So for me, the second I start to see that, you know, it slows down a little bit, not as much selling. We've come a long way. It's a chance for me just to get out or get something off and then reassess. Because you can always get back in it. But yeah, for me, it's not worth giving the, the 20, 30 ticks back on a pullback. And then, yeah, as you can see, we start to get this buy step in with some bigger size. And it just, you know, you've done a lot, a long, Big move straight down, and it's a chance to get something off and reassess. And we do break lower later. We've done a lot of volume, but yeah, for me that was that was the trade. It was the from the highs of the range through to the lows, and then it's it should be how how can you add into them lows with a bit more conviction, right? So if we go through the quick key takeaways, for me on this trade, it was a chance to know really understand the risk reward of these early access trades. Because for me, like if you've got this, you've broke down, you've got this range. I'm fine selling, you know, through the low aggressively. But for me, if I sell through the low now, I'm quite. I used to be quite bad at selling into the low. It stalls a little bit, pulls back, and I'm now I'm short here. You're not really wrong till you're up here, and I'm trying to find a reason to hold it, and then you know, getting out here before it goes. Whereas if you can make this range and see a clear push out, so maybe came back up, pushes out and back in. A chance, you know, to get the early access and, you know, get passively short in here for the breakdown instead of just trying to sell the lows all the time. Especially if you get the breakout first before the low. And, you know, you can keep it tight. So some now you've got better risk reward to, you know, selling down here with a stop here and playing the move down. But it also, you know, by having that higher risk reward and you've got something on, when you sell into the low, if you're going to be aggressive and add, you know, your average is now mid-range. So you're not going to, you know, be worried it's going to flick down, flick up, you're going to take a loss. You still, you're not going to make as much, but you've got that chance to add. And it's, you know, understanding that these can give you great risk reward trades, you know, being passive and just being a little bit more patient to sit in the trade. The second point is something I used to use all the time and then kind of like drifted away. Then Eric did a stream on it and he's started having it on his streams more and I brought it back because for me, it's not everyone in the office or traders use it, but the time and sales just is next to the ladder as I'm trading can give me a good representation of you know, the size in the market, what's going through. 
and also, you know, just the activity. You can see this thing, you know, churning out quicker. You know there's more participation and, you know, the brakes could be better. You can also see if you get to the highs and, you know, like you've got big buyer stepping in and no one steps in, then maybe this isn't the time to play the, play the break and you might get a rotation back. So it's just something I can add just to give me that extra conviction in my trades. And like on that gold one, you see, you know, someone hit 90 up, doesn't get any higher and then just drifts back. You can see these points of where, okay, someone's absorbing here or the buyers aren't in control anymore. Or, you know, someone flushes down and sells a load and, you know, it comes off and it comes down to like a double O's and we bounce back. Well, now, you know, this kind of area could be a good reference point to get below to keep you in the trade. So it's just, yeah, just an extra tool, um, order flow that you can use to help, you know, keep you in trades, also give you more conviction and just really understand what the market's doing and who's participating in a move. Yeah, and then the last one is a similar point is how the early access can allow you to be aggressive through the lows, up the size on the trade at the inflection point. Because obviously the inflection point on a breakout like that, is you've, had, you've had the squeeze, is these lows here. That's the inflection point to go lower. So if you can get in here, you obviously as we said, it can give you more conviction now. You, you're up a lot on that. So, you know, really hit through these lows for that flush down without having your average here. Your average is in, in here, maybe. So, yeah, they were the key points for me. And it's, it's the first time I've really, you know, trusted myself to sit in a trade longer and, you know, not be just getting out because you're bored. Or, you know, you, see, you can see little things that you don't like on the order flow. But with using your, you know, your overall view of where you want this to go and finding out ways to keep yourself in, seeing these like buyers step in and the market not go anywhere. You know, it's how we can all look to like hold trades, maybe just take a bit more out of the trades we take. So yeah, that's it for today. Uh, usual place if you've got any information, info at axiofutures.com. And then I'll be back in two weeks with another street. Thank you.